Hey folks, it's JW here with Stevens Family Outdoors, and I'm in the trapping shed cooking some uh, traps here for coyotes. Gonna set a few coyote traps here on some of my farms that we hunt uh, for the landowner. And um, I've got about 74 or 84, be seven dozen uh, Sleepy Creek one and three quarters, and uh, a couple dozen of the Victor one and three quarter offset jaws. Uh, very, very, very good coyote traps. Uh, not too big, not too small, just the right size. Uh, I modified mine to suit me to where um, they work best. And then um, this is where we skin the critters up in here. This doesn't look very good, but I tell you what, it gets the job done. And then over here we've got uh, few stretchers hanging on the wall then in the other room in there where we hang the fur we've got uh, a whole bunch more stretchers so I'm not running a long line this year I usually ran about a 200 mile a day trap line but uh, the price of fur and everything like that is so down right now that you go uh, two or three years and you get in a the hole, then you learn real quick. So I'm going to have fun. I've got a farmer that we hunt on. We probably hunt on about a thousand acres different spots um, that this farmer has. And uh, he wants me to trap some coyotes. So that's sort of like scratching one another's back. He lets me hunt my tail bucks with my recurve and uh, I tend to the coyotes for him. Well, folks, JW again here. I uh, just got finished boiling and dyeing my traps and my trapping steaks. And I was going to just do like about three dozen. But I ended up doing them all and I probably got closer to ten. Ten dozen traps I got finished here. And my trapping steaks have some that are... 18 inches and some are 24 and uh, For those of you who Don't know I double stake All of my traps you can see on there. There's a double stake swivels and uh, That's and I cross cross them like crisscross so that um, If a coyote does pull he's pulling like scissors against the scissors out of the ground and and you don't lose them that way there's my trapping stakes and it's just a few of them that I went ahead and did and then we've got some bigger traps here the MB's Minnesota brand and Sterling's and then here these are my Sleepy Creek one and three quarters that I use 99.9% .9 of the time for my coyote sets then over here are some uh, one and three quarter victors and uh, They're all set. They're all all set jaws. So that's what I got going now, I'm going to be uh, Heating up the waxer and I'm going to dip my sleepy creeks and my um Sterlings and MBs over here um, So we can go ahead and get those Ready for when I do go on the trap line um, I'm in the process now of waxing and this is The setup of course. I've got an, an old stove here that we use the top on and The wax is in this kettle here and what I can do with this is once it melts and starts to smoke a little bit then uh, these traps here that I use are in bundles of six and they fit down in there nice and snug and once um, I put them down in there and if they're got a little bit of water on them they'll sizzle a little bit so you got to be careful there I'll leave them down in there just till the traps get uh, heated up to the temperature of the wax and then I pull them out 
and they should just look like they're wet. There should be no white wax drying on them at all. They should just look wet. Uh, and I use this long adapter here to dip my traps in and out of, uh, you know, so it's safe. And what you want to also do is you want to always make sure that you have a lid handy to put over top the wax. Should it combust, you know, from getting too hot, and sometimes it will if you're not careful, uh, it'll start to burn down in there, the, the fire down inside of your pot. You just take your lid and cover it over like that, and that'll smother it. And then you just need to turn your fire down a little bit. Uh, once again, when you get finished waxing your traps and take them out, they should just look black and wet. There should be no white wax on them at all. If there are any white wax left on them, that means your traps did not get hot enough in the wax. So you need to let them get up to the temperature of the wax, and when you take them out, they'll just look wet. Okay, folks, this is J.W. Stevens again. Uh, in the process of boiling, my wax is ready. I've already dipped uh, a bundle of traps in the wax. You see how they look when they come out. They've been in there about a minute. Now, when you bring them up over the fire, you've got to shake them a little bit, bring them away quick. And what I do is I stick them out my trap and shed door and sling them back and forth a little bit to try to get the uh, excess wax off and if you look at them here I'm going to lay them back down here and if you look at them there you see that they just look wet they don't look white Well, good morning, boys and girls. Uh, this is J.W. Stevens with Stevens Family Outdoors. And I'm getting ready to go set a few coyote traps today. Um, let me show you a little bit of my setup here. This is a little box with, I don't know if you can see in there or not, but my traps are in there. Got some one and three quarter sleepy creeks and then some five and six hundred sterlings couple of those for uh, separate places where there's no dogs or anything then in this I've got my peat moss which I bed my traps in and cover them exclusively I do not use any dirt at all this time of year it'll freeze up then over here is an assortment of my stakes here's my 24s and over here is my 18s and I do cross stake double stake with a cross stake system for coyotes you should always stake for the strongest possible animal that could get in your trap even if you're not going to keep the animal you your trap needs to stay there so you can let it out then here's my uh, trapping bag it's a to leg it trapping bag and here is my lure of choice which is leggets and I've got thousands of foxes and coyotes on that and that alone I do not use any bait it's all lure I just use the old cotton gloves just to keep from transferring sweat sweat is your enemy urine's not your enemy sweat is your enemy spit is not your enemy sweat is your enemy it gets on your hands or drips off your face or head down onto your set location you're done and they're going to dig you out
Well, here we are. Farm number one, the first red fox of the season. Uh, if you notice how we've got this road, it comes from a big thicket over here and runs down all the way down. This road, uh, big thicket over here, runs all the way down and down this way. But behind us is this finger coming. It crosses the highway, comes all the way up, and stops right here where the traps are setting. So what you have, what you have here, is you have a three-way cross, which is absolutely perfect to catch these foxes. And notice how behind me the grass is real tall, and then you have the short grass. Them foxes do not want to go in that tall grass, so they will run this short grass and these edges right here. And this has been a killer spot for us for for years. So. Fox number one on the 2016 season, so we're going to take care of it and uh, move along here. A perfect catch on this fox, by the way. Um, as you can see, perfect. Y'all stay tuned. What do you think? Oh, yeah. What do you think, guys? Yeah. I'm checking traps. Now look. Look at me now. Yeah. Mr. Hambone back here. He took a drink of his soda as he was. He got the right name, Johnny. Well, folks, here we are. We got us a, a raccoon. Things are a little aggressive. I'll let this little guy go. See that? There you have it. Have a good one. Well, oops, so far I've caught a red fox and a coon in this set. And the uh, coons like the, what we call max out. If you notice how all of a sudden it's kind of rolly and like dumpy all around. Um, give me some dirt. The only reason I'm coming over here to get it is because it's soft. It's softer than digging in the farmer's field. Mess it up. But show you something. That coon done made a mess of this thing. Man, did he ever. Find his pan. There it is. See that little white spot? Kind of do that. Then we're going to pull this backing. Keep that out of the way. Down on both sides. To where anything coming through, fox or coyote wise, put that there to make him walk through it. And right there it is. A couple drop saws necessary. And we're out of here. Possum trapper over here on us. Two for two there, Pops, on you on the possums. Yeah. If I remember correctly, I'm not the only one that caught a possum. And two foxes. Blind hog will find an acorn every now and then.
that's just a sign that the coyotes have moved in and moved the foxes out or killed them one or the other and therefore our population is going to be more and more coyotes and less means and you're less going to see a lot more of us calling instead of trapping guys and that's right and the reason we don't catch a lot of coyotes is because their home range is a lot larger than a fox a fox may go a mile uh, circle where a coyote may go five to eight miles circles uh, and only come through a certain area say every 10 to 14 days uh, right now um, where a fox would be in the same area every night so that's why you that's why we our best year was 477 foxes in 53 days uh, back in 2004 I believe it was so those days are gone forever so we're seeing history here that will never ever again in this part of the country uh, see foxes at that numbers again so the coyotes are here to stay all right and so am i it's war <laughs>